Hi and welcome to this the third part in the tutorial series on how to create a fish for the blue. Okay so just to recap over what we have so far um, in the first tutorial we created the body and modeled it out and in the second one we created the fins and also made some tweaks onto the body as well. Um, so also just to bear in mind that this asset is currently still using a mirror modifier so if I disable that we can see everything is mirrored so we only have one side and um, it's actually really useful to leave that as it is for now and um, because when we do the UV unwrapping and um, it's actually really handy to have the UVs overlaid on top of each other so we only actually have to unwrap one side okay so let's go into unwrapping this fish first of all we need to split our window and um, just by dragging the top corner across Open the UV image editor and clear the render result which should be there as default. Okay, um, as it stands at the moment if I go into edit mode and select everything we've got no UV unwrap at all, no UV coordinates in that screen. Um, so to get something in there what you do is just hit U in the 3D view part um, and then select unwrap from the list and this is what we'll get. Now this might suffice for something very very basic indeed. Um, in this case, because we need our textures to be um, very smoothly wrapped over the surface and to be of an equal size and resolution, this won't do at all. And the reason for that as you can see here, some of these polygons are really large and some of them if I go all the way back here are really small. Um, however on the fish they're pretty much the same size so these polygons here will get a really high resolution and these will be really low also we're wasting lots and lots of texture space this square here is our texture space so to make things better for ourselves we need to use um, what we call seams or at least in blender they're called seams so how that makes things better for us is when we place a seam it actually act like a, a cut and um, but in the UV space not in the actual model so to apply a seam just select an edge loop by alt right clicking and then press ctrl and E bring up your edges menu and mark that as a seam now if you open that all up again now hit U to unwrap again we can see it's cut along that seam and unwrapped it a bit more nicely for us okay um, one of our biggest areas of concern that we also need to mark a seam for is this here. You might not be able to tell right now, but this is actually the mouth. Um, so the top lips, the bottom lips, and it's stretched that out to try and open out for us. Um, so that's actually not going to be much use for us at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place a seam along this edge here and all the way around to the bottom, as you can see there. So I'm just Control E, mark seam. Now you can see the differences mix. If I unwrap again, there we go. Again, much more like what we should expect. Okay, so this particular fish doesn't require many seams. Some others may require much more. This one's not a bad one at all. One other place I want to create a seam is on the gills. Well, the reason for this, if I have a look in here, um, so these ones that I'm selecting here are actually the back faces these are hidden behind the gill and um, but because of the way the algorithm works to unwrap it it's actually stretched all out for us which in some cases may be useful but in this case it's actually a hindrance so what I want to do is I want to separate these and possibly some of these as well from the this particular unwrap this is called an island so all of these that are connected we call this an island I want to separate that and uh, make an island for itself. So to do that again, just like the mouth, select an edge loop there and select another edge loop in there. Make sure I'm in edge mode so that I've just got edges select and not faces. Okay, a little more difficult on this one. And just make sure that we're creating a full island there so that means we've got a full loop all connecting. And then if I hit Control A, Mark that as a seam and then unwrap again. You can see there that that's cut that section out. Okay, so that's just gone. And there it is there. Okay, so that I believe 
will do for the seams. Okay, we could probably, in some cases, get away with leaving that as it is. In this particular case, because of the gill uh, specifically, and some other areas where we need to do a bit of cleanup work. Okay, so and the main thing I need to do actually is to utilize this UV space a little better. Okay, so to do that, it's just a case of rearranging what we have. Okay, so to begin with, I'm just going to grab this island here and rotate it, move it along a little bit, and scale it up by a factor of 1.05. Definitely worth bearing in mind how much you're scaling sections by because you want to keep it all scaled by the same amount. So I'm going to do the same with this one, move it over slightly, scale by 1.05. That's just tapping in on the number pad to do that if you didn't know already. And to select an island, which I didn't mention, just hover over it with your mouse. You don't actually have to have anything selected. I could select this one over here. So to select this, just press L on your keyboard and I'll select all of the eye. Okay, so the eye is actually quite small on the mesh. Um, but because we only actually see a really small section of it, just probably this inside pentagon here, and um, we actually need that to be quite big. So we'll use up plenty of UV space for that. Put that in there like so. And so let's see inside of the mouth. This doesn't have to be particularly big because it's hardly seen. Let's put it in there like that. And select the back of the gill. And put that in there like that. Okay, so we've actually used slightly more space than what we had initially for each of these islands. Um, as you can see, I've got a bit of a gap around all of the outside. Now you may be wondering why am I wasting that space? I could pack in really tightly. And that's true, I could. If the texture resolution was high enough, then that would be fine. But because we are working with quite low texture resolutions, if you imagine one pixel was to be the size of one of these blocks here, and if I was to put, say here, for example, if that was one pixel, that color pixel, that information would transfer onto the back of the, the fish here, just before the fin, and also onto the eye. Um, so of course, as you can imagine, that can cause real difficulties with texturing. So if we just leave a bit of a gap around the islands, um, that makes things much easier further down the line for texturing. Okay, one other area that I mentioned that we'll need a bit of cleanup is the, the gill slit. Because that's probably going to cause problems, but we can't really do much with that because we don't know how that's going to affect how the texture will apply to the fish. So, to get around that, what we need to do is we need to apply a texture to the fish. So if I just go into um, material view on here, I think that's a material, yeah texture, sorry. And then open up all of the UVs, I want to add an image. And I want to change the generated type to UV grid. And that will apply a UV grid or UV test grid onto our UVs. Now what we can do is go back into here and put, come out of edit mode. I want to go into an add a material just temporarily and a texture. I want that to be an image, which is this image. So if we just go onto this box here, we can select that image. As you can see, we've got Untitled there, matches up with the name here, Untitled. We'll select that. And currently that's on a generated mapping. I want to change that to UV. And there we go, we can see here how that is applying to the fish. So you can see the problem that I was trying to refer to. It's all the texture around the gill is currently stretched. So that is what we need to try and fix, or at least make a little bit better. We'll not necessarily be able to fix it completely. So to fix this, if I, for example, grab these and move them over, you'll see immediately how that has an impact on the mesh. If you look on the left there, you can see how that's moving around. So I don't want to move them over too much because I can't have them overlapping with this space here because that would be sharing the texture space, which is never a good thing. Um, but what I can do is I can just try and tweak them just to get rid of a little bit of that stretching. Um, I'm just looking over on the left there just to see what kind of impact it has and just moving it where necessary. Okay, so still not looking great by, by any means. Um, however, we can see 
that. Most of those um, polygonal shapes from the test grid are looking much more square than they were. Um, so that's going to result in much less stretching in our textures. And that's what we that's what we mean when people talk about stretching in textures, is when you have this, well, as you can see, stretching. Um, so our ideal look we want to be going for is something like that. I can work on this a little bit better and make it a little cleaner. Um, but is each one of these squares from the test grid needs to be roughly the same size throughout the entire mesh. Um, and that's looking all right. Okay, so moving on to the fins, we're going to do much the same again. Um, just select the fins, reopen that second window that we had, and choose that to UAV image editor again. Again, clear that render result. That over so we can see. And as we can see, again, we've got no UVs. Over into edit mode, and with everything selected, hit U, and unwrap. Okay, so we can see here it's not looking like too bad of an unwrap. Um, however, we're facing some new problems that we weren't facing before. We don't have any stretching because they're all flat planes, but we do have some duplicates of the fins. We can see here we've got two pelvic fins, and here and here we've got two pectoral fins. And um, the reason for that is if I just deselect them and deselect all of this, if we remember we duplicate these so that we add opposite facing normals. If I select all of that using Ctrl and L, we can see there's our two UV sets of coordinates, our two islands. Um, so to get those into one island, or perfectly placed on top of each other, so it looks like one island. Um, so I can go into the front view, hit U and unwrap, it would do that. However, if I hit U and go into project from view, there we go, we can see that they perfectly line on top of each other just as these do. And we can do the same thing with these. Just select two of those, Control and L, go into the side view, and hit unwrap and project from view. And that'll do much the same thing again. However, me being pedantic, I know that these are slightly rotated. So if I rotate these back, that's 17 degrees, I know because I checked it earlier. Go to side view. And I'm just going to unwrap those again, so that I know that they're perfectly placed and not slightly out. Okay, so if I select all again, we can see we've got a bit of a, a UV island overlapping issue. Um, I need to utilise this space a bit better anyway, so that's not too much of a problem. Um, but we will need to move these around, of course. So just as before, choose an L to select an island, grab and move that over. And again, just for this one, grab and move it over. I think I'm going to place it like that. And this will take a little plane with just to utilize the space as good as possible. And just kind of plan it out in my head as I go along. So if I do that one and put that in there. And this one's going to be a problem because it's so long. I do it like that, and yeah, place it like there, and this one here, I can place, I think in here, something like that. Okay, so just by utilizing that space a bit better. Moving one or two bits around, I managed to scale just about all of it up. Um, it's not quite so important that it's not all scaled to the same degree as before. And the reason for that is that none of it actually matches up with a seam. Um, if I'd scaled separately, say down this seam for example, on the actual fish body, it would have been very obvious that these squares were much bigger than these ones for example. Whereas here, because they have a natural break in the fins, it is much more acceptable to have a slightly different resolution. Um, obviously, try and keep them somewhat similar as I have. And that's just about the result you'll get, hopefully. Okay, so just to 
match that up with what we had before and get a bit of a test UV grid on there. I'm just going to reapply a UV grid to this one. And this is called Untitled 2. So just bear that in mind. Come out of edit mode. And we'll add a new material in there. Just move that over so I can see my buttons. And a new texture. Again, image or movie. And again, select UV coordinates. And again, I'm going to select Untitled 2. And there we go. You can see that applied to the fins. And we can see by looking very briefly and um, there is very little difference in the sizes of the squares on each of these. Maybe slightly more resolution on this one which isn't too bad. Slightly more resolution on this one which again because they're such small fins but they have a lot of detail that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, okay so there we go. That is the whole fish um, unwrapped ready for texturing and what we can do just one final thing that you may find useful if you wanted to export these UVs and to paint on top of if you don't plan on painting within Blender the way you go about doing that is select the fish and you'll have to export these separate go into the edit mode so you can see all your UVs and in the UV image editor window select UVs at the bottom export UV layout and you can obviously choose where you want to export them to but down here is the important part I would recommend leaving that on PNG and change the opacity down to zero select a suitable resolution I would normally do mine at 2048 by 2048 because that's what texture size I tend to paint in and then export to wherever you like so for example in this one I would just export that to my desktop it does take a little moment just to calculate them and to make a texture up for you. And there we go, they're actually exported. I could use those in Photoshop if I liked to paint textures onto. Okay, so that's the UV unwrapping tutorial complete. And I hope you check out my next tutorial, which will most likely be on how to go ahead and sculpt the details into the fish and then bake them into a normal map. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much.